So why would I recommend looking for an older partner than a younger partner in the Philippines? First thing I want to talk about is the younger partners. The younger women are normally 19 to 25, and then the guys are 60 plus on average. Um, the first thing you've got is nothing in common. But pushing all that aside, the major issue is they've come from a background where they haven't really had any priorities in life. They haven't had to work for a living. They haven't had to provide yet. Often these women are part of a system that's a bit like a pyramid. You'll have at the top the grandparents or the head of the family of some description, be it an older sibling of their parents. Whatever it is, they'll sit at the top. And then everybody at the top, everyone at the bottom feeds into the top, then the top feeds down. So like say the seven in the family and the, the eldest brother is in charge. Five of the other five of his brothers and sisters are RFWs, while those five will feed back into their brother, who will then fund the education of all the kids in that pyramid through various scholarship things, and you know they're basically funding self-funding within the family group. But the whole point of this funding is not just for schooling; it's also for the pension plan, because when you're at one of these kids and you go to work you then pay your money back into the family so a lot of the time you're not making any money whatsoever so why go to work and when you think about it that's why a lot of people don't bother you know because nobody really talks about this but that's reality i mean why would you go to work and then give all your salary away to one of your relatives because many people actually do um i remember talking to philip about it because he got fed up with employees coming to him on a monday going We've got no money. And he's like, yeah, but I paid you on Friday. It's like, yeah, but I went back to the barren guy and blah, blah, blah. The par parents have took all the money off them or their relatives. And they come back to work Monday and they haven't got money for food for the week. You know, that's, you know, they just hand it over without even a second thought. They don't think, well, hang on, I've got work on Monday. They've just given everything away. They don't even keep some back for the food and everything else very very common so why would you want to work this is why i know a lot of expats complain about having a lazy wife girlfriend etc it's because this is where they end up they end up giving all their money anyway so what's the point of working so meet the foreigner get married or whatever and then sit on the sofa until they retire or the expat dies one of the two so that's why a lot of that doesn't work um it's not me running them down it's quite simply that a lot of these women just no, don't know anything better often with the expat circles as well the women have a low education level and as such conversation is pretty much non-existent and they'll sit there texting i've i mean the funny thing i went to a guy's house before and his wife just sits upstairs if he has a visitor in the house, she just goes upstairs and just ignores everybody. Um, she's just a bit strange. But some of the other women I've seen, the guy will be talking to me face to face. You know, say you bump into each other in a shopping mall. His wife stood there just on the phone. Completely as if, like, it's irrelevant. You know, I'm not here. I'm just talking to my friends on the phone. What's the point of a relationship? That's two people living separate lives in the same proximity. For me, complete waste of time. I couldn't be bothered with it. It would frustrate me having somebody that ignorant. And also, what's the conversations about? I know a lot of guys go, well, I'm not really bothered about conversation. You will be after six months and living in the same house and everybody around you has similar um, conversational skills because you're maybe neighbors, etc. but they don't do politics. They don't do sports unless you're into local sports or, or boxing and a lot of the other things like politics and stuff just doesn't exist, you know, because unless it's on a local level, most people have no connection with you. Now, for me, it's a little frustrating, but then again, in the UK, the education system's dropping all the time. So I find sitting here in Spain, I've got several intellectuals nearby that I can go and have a chat with. I mean, 
the one of them goes online about 11 o'clock at night every day. So I have a chat with him. And the same with Kento. And he's currently in Japan. He he did the same for the US. He went over to Japan for a break. Um, you need to have your social circles of some description. And this is why if your partner has no connection with you, be aware, it does get tedious and boring. Now on to women that are a bit older. First thing is, a lot of these women are widows. Now, you think, well, hang on, you're thinking the 50-year-old spinster um, that is devout, religious, etc. No, there's motorbike accidents all the time in the Philippines. There is uh, car crashes, bus crashes, etc. A lot of women are widows and still in their 20s because their husbands have been killed in various incidents or their ex-police and been shot, etc., all these things lead to a woman being stuck on her own and often bring up children because that's what obviously with the Catholic faith, marriage, children, house, all that is all put in one parcel. So they then bring up children on their own. So the first thing you've got is a very independent woman. But the second thing you've got is a woman that knows how to make a living Third, ring, third one, responsibilities. She's paid the house, she's paid their bills, she's put her kids for education. And normally they're educated because they have to be. You know, they, they have gone through life making sure they got ahead because they needed to. So as such, they're very, very resourceful, very smart, and also have a lot to bring to the table from their side. Because let's be honest, most of the expats just bring money to the table. You know, a lot of them aren't exactly, uh, what's the, Mel Gibson, not Mel Gibson, that's a bad, uh, Brad Pitt, let's have Brad Pitt. Um, they're not looking like Brad Pitt, for example, they're, they're often overweight, often grumpy, and often um, got issues of some other description. <laughs> so... A lot of these women, I'll be honest with you, will vet you because you're coming into their family. You're not just meeting that one person. So you will find some, a lot of guys have been rejected by these women because they've got too much to risk. They already have everything they need. But they're looking for somebody that can commit to the same level as they're willing to commit, which is completely. And... And I want to say here, not all these women are widows, by the way. A lot of the women I know in their probably, I would say about 30 upwards that are still single have come through bad relationships or they may be single mothers or they're other reasons. But they're all very strong women. And at the same time, they meet the right guy. They commit 100% because they want it to work. You know, they'll put themselves through hardship to make it work. And that's what makes them fantastic wives. At the same time, you're not after a slave, which is the important thing here, because they won't let you do that anyway, even if you wanted to, because they're more likely to leave, because they, although they'll put up with hardships, they, they won't get married until they're 100% anyway. But what you will have is somebody that will be committed to you and somebody you can rely on. And for them, they've got the same. And that's what makes these relationships work because they understand what they need to do in a relationship. You, They understand what you're looking for in a relationship, but you need to understand what they're wanting in a relationship. Otherwise, when it goes sour, there's only one person to blame, which is yourself. Um, I can go on about gold diggers and etc., but I'll leave that for another video. The main thing here is, though, personally, I recommend women in their 30s upwards. Um, I know some of the guys have mentioned women in their 40s, etc. I know women in their 40s, and I could sit on my backside in the, in the Philippines if I was single and married a 40 plus, because they would take care of me. <laughs> so they they already have been through life already. They already know how to make money. They've got you know they're independent but a lot of time they don't even need to work themselves because they've already invested in this invested in that and got themselves in a position where they're very stable in the philippines and also very well connected normally because of using networking etc to get ahead so yeah the older women make your life a lot easier i'll be honest with you uh, the younger ones generally cause headaches and if you're looking for the 19 plus 
they often have boyfriends in their background. Now, I'm not saying that all the older women are going to be fantastic, because that's not right either. I know of uh, some women that actually have Filipino boyfriends and American husbands. They, When they come back to the Philippines, they come on trips on their own, and the husband's back in the U.S. completely unaware what their wife's up to. That's the problem with uh, living in a neighborhood where you actually understand what's going on. Because people will tell you, because people love gossip in the Philippines. So I know a lot of information about people, um, purely because their neighbors, etc., will tell me. Because they, as soon as they know something, they have to tell somebody. And that's why if you wanted to know what's going on or something, there's always somebody in your neighborhood who would tell you if you wanted to know. Um, this is why it's important to be respectful. Respectful. Um, it's like when people say don't crap in your, uh, on your own doorstep. It's very true, especially in the Philippines. That could be an entire island mine because things travel so quickly. I remember being in the furthest north on Cebu. And there's a guy there. He... Uh, what's he do? He does uh, blogging. He, he's an online blogger. But he knows me because he knows my laundry. He's related to my laundry woman in Minglanilia. And so many connections are like that. So the fact is, she knew I'd been there, even though I hadn't even spoke to the guy before. Because what had happened is the laundry woman had talked about me being online. He'd looked at my website, never even spoken to me before. But then he recognized me being up there uh, for an airsoft tournament. So be aware, things do travel very fast and people love to talk. So by the time it gets from A to B, it's converted a few times into a completely distorted version. And I could do a story on that, but I'm not sure if I should. I should do as a bit of a warning to other people. <laughs> but yeah. This is why I highly recommend older women. As long as you're a good guy, you're going to have no headaches. But I put a little disclaimer here. 